Lissa Productions. In Lab 9, we're going to be using our second active component for the first time, which is an operational amplifier or an op amp. There are nominally two inputs and an output, and the inputs are known as the non-inverting and the inverting input, and then an output. There's two other crucial things where we provide power to this. There's a VCC and a VE. And VCC is bigger than VE. In our case, this is going to be plus 12 and minus 12 volts. And this particular, this op amp, the nominal behavior of this op amp is that the output voltage is some open loop gain, which is a large number, times the difference of the two voltages there. So it amplifies the difference of those two. And this is large. It's limited that this output voltage can never exceed VCC and it can never get smaller than VEE. Those are known as the rails, so it's trapped between those. We don't usually use the op amp in this particular mode, although we will measure it to try to determine what this open loop gain is, very high frequency. In an actual op amp, while we assume this is large, it actually starts out large at low frequency and at high frequency it falls off, crossing the value of 1 in sort of the megahertz range. When we use op amps, we will use them with negative feedback, which means that we somehow connect part of the output back into the inverting input. So we have a connection between here and here, maybe through a resistor or some other component. When we do that feedback, we stabilize this and we get a gain that's smaller than this A0, but is constant. And, you, and we derived in the text, basically the constant is independent of this A0, it depends on what fraction of this output we're feeding back into the input. And that we can control very precisely with resistors. In lab 9, we're actually going to measure some of the limitations of this. So the op amp has large open loop gain. We will try to measure that at high frequency, where it actually is small enough to measure. The op amp, while we may believe it follows voltages exceedingly rapidly, in fact, it can't follow voltages infinitely fast, so we'll measure how fast it can track voltages. That's known as the slew rate. So we'll put triangle waves or square waves in here and look at the response there. We'll also measure the input impedance and the output impedance of this. And we assume generally the input impedance is infinite. We'll see it's actually pretty, it's very large, but maybe not quite infinite. The output impedance is often assumed to be zero. We'll see it's a, maybe on the order of a couple of ohms or so. So that's what we'll be measuring in lab nine, the basic properties of this op amp. Let's go down in the lab now and have a look at this. In lab nine, we're going to be working with the second active component we have in this course, which is the operational amplifier, or op amp for short. It's this small little device here with eight legs. It's got a little dot at one end. There's a schematic in your, tech, in your lab manual that tells you how things are wired up. And you can see here, we'll zoom in on it in a second, that we place it across the, the, the jumper in the middle of the board there. The op amp needs to have power supplied to it, which is plus 12 and minus 12 volts, which are VCC and VE. It has two inputs, an inverting and a non-inverting input, and it has a single output. In lab nine, we've set the, the, the op amp up to be a follower circuit. So we've done this by, the circuit here, we'll zoom in in a second. The output is fed into the inverting input, so we have negative feedback, and we look at the output. And you can sort of see it on the scope here. We'll see it better when we zoom in, but the output is a copy of the input. Similar to what the transistor emitter follower circuit does, the op amp follower circuit has an enormous input impedance, virtually no output impedance, and makes a copy of the signal. And so we'll be measuring the properties of this. Also in this lab, we'll be measuring sort of the limitations of the op amp. We say it has a high input impedance, low output impedance and large gain, but that's not always true. The gain falls off with frequency. The impedances aren't quite what they are. Little bits of current flow into the inputs, small amounts. And so we'll measure that. We'll also measure how fast the op amp can change. So we'll measure the slew rate, how fast it can respond to things. So those are the measurements we'll be doing here, basically studying the properties of this op amp. So in this circuit, we have the op amp set up in a follower mode. We have the plus 12 volts for VCC, the minus 12 volts to VEE. The input is coming in here. That's the non-inverting input. The inverting input is fed back, has a feedback from the output. So we take the output into the inverting input. 
something else that's important here, all these ground connections here, even though there's no ground on the op amp, they're tied into the ground bus of this circuit here. That's very crucial. All the grounds have to be tied together on a ground here. And you see the input and output. It's a follower circuit. They're both the same over here. And this is the circuit as we vary the frequency that we can measure the limitations of this op amp. So the open loop gain, we can look at the slew rate and various other things. So this is what we'll be using here. The op amp you can see is laid across the middle there, so that's kind of obvious. And a lot of the legs just don't have anything hooked into them. The critical ones, the two inputs, the output, and most critical, the power, VCC and VEE. So in conclusion, we've measured the properties of two different op amps, the 741 and the 411. We've seen that the 411 is a better op amp than the 741, but they both have limitations. Neither one of them can change voltage infinitely fast. The input and output impedances, well, large and small respectively, are not infinite and zero. We've seen that that's true. And essentially the, the op open loop gain of the op amp falls off at 20 dB per decade as increasing frequency. And when we get up to a few hundred kilohertz or so, the op amp's open loop gain is comparable to gains that we might want in a circuit. So we're not able to use the op amp that we've got here to amplify signals that are in the hundreds of kilohertz to megahertz range. But it's still a very useful circuit. It's got very valuable properties. And we'll continue to use that throughout this course.